Let me take a selfie. Selfie. A photograph that one has taken of oneself, typically one taken with a smartphone or webcam and shared via social media. Society ideologically accepts selfies as the norm, whereas less than 10 years ago they were non-existent. The idea of the selfie has continued to evolve within society through music, social media, editing apps, and selfie tools like the selfie stick and webcam. Ideology, which is a term I will be often referring to throughout this video, means the set of values, ideas, and beliefs society has predetermined as to what is culturally acceptable and what is considered to be the social norm. There are many different forms of selfies, including group selfies, mirror selfies, candid selfies, and pictures of individuals posing alone. All of these have developed from the ideological assumption that everyone must abide by selfies in order to be accepted. Rosalind Gill, a theorist and feminist, argues that post-feminism is disregarded because society continues to engage in things that objectify and sexualize women. I am going to explain the use and effects of the selfie in relation to Rosalind Gill's post-feminism theory. I will be breaking down her theory in seven subcategories that will further analyze the ways in which we take selfies and how others perceive them. These themes coexist and are structured by inequalities of the selfie that relate to individualism, bodily property, dominance of makeup, sexualized culture, and the displace surrounding the selfie. The selfie is created by a framework of values, ideas, and beliefs that are culturally predetermined. The phenomenon surrounding the ideal of the selfie has the ability to make others feel better about themselves through social praise and acceptance. We must ask ourselves, are we posting selfies online to solely please our needs and wants or to please others? Females and males are both part of the engagement of taking selfies to please others and please the self by reading positive and uplifting comments about their body, face, hair, and or makeup. However, this can also create an adverse reaction from certain people who may feel your image is displeasing. This can be demeaning and create self-esteem issues within. Why do we do this? Why do we set ourselves up on a pedestal for others to judge, mock, or critique our appearance? Well, according to Rosalind Gill, post-feminist sensibility is made up of the notions of political and cultural influences. Not only do we see this on reality TV, talk shows, movies, and advertisements, but we determine this is the way it ought to be because of self-determination. You are the ones who ultimately decide what is and isn't accepted. Not only does her post-feminist theory relate to females, but it also relates to males in that they create inequalities between the two genders by condoning with the idea that both genders have to look a certain way in their selfies in order to be considered cool. Many people, especially teenagers like yourselves, have been sent or sent out nude selfies. Typically, people send nude images to someone of their interest in hopes they will receive acceptance or praise from that person. Now, people have taken the ideal of the nude selfie to a new regime. Kim Kardashian recently posted a nude mirror selfie, claiming it was to empower women and allow them to accept their bodies. Do you really think that was the reason she posted this? We accept and conform to taking nude selfies because we are culturally surrounded by nudity through pornography, TV and movies, as well as sex-related music. Women and men are always at risk of failing the public by not having a certain body or displaying it for the world to see. Thus, we must ask ourselves, are we engaging in taking selfies to pleasure thyself, or are we simply attempting to please others through provocative and nude pictures? Rosalind Gill would argue that people are sexualizing themselves and to be placed on display for others to see and judge with provocative pictures. She claims we, as society, have an obsessive preoccupation with the body. I guess they forgot to add that in the definition of selfie. People have the capability to change the way they look based on the angle, lighting, or with the filter they choose to place over their selfie. Apps like Instagram and Snapchat have implemented the ability to add a filter to shift or change the color of the original image to enhance the way one may look. Females and even some males are also constructed to wear a lot of makeup before they take a selfie to better the image of the self, which tends to dominate the innocence of the selfie and controlling how one can appear with tools like Photoshop and things like the Kylie Jenner Lip Challenge. This was created by social media users where people would take videos and suction cup their lips in order to give the illusion of fuller lips. This is another way that people can feel a part of a unified social group by engaging in this viral lip challenge. Rosalind Gill further explains the self as a work in progress. 
We are constantly surrounded by advertisements and social media telling us that we need to conform to certain things in order to be accepted within society. TV shows produce what Gil refers to as new ethical selves. In these shows, they teach us how to dress and appear in order to be successful and conform to society. We articulate that by taking selfies to show off our appearances. Selfies allow others to analyze and sexualize you whether your intent was to have a sexual essence attached to that selfie. Ask yourselves, which image do you think is more sexualized? The duck face is an evident form of sexualization in that many people, particularly females, make this face in selfies to attract the male gaze and attention of others. This is not only done by everyday people, celebrities like the Kardashians are also conforming to the duck face, which seems to create a lot of negative influence towards society, especially young females. A selfie has the ability to articulate oneself according to the regimes of visibility. With that, we as selfie consumers become forms of data by engaging in posting selfies via social media. Limited amount of privacy creates visible discourse to the surveillance of the self and surveillance from others. We connect the selfie to things that seem so normative through ideology. For example, if you don't take a selfie at the gym, did you really go to the gym and work out unless proved otherwise? The selfie enables surveillance not only in the things you do, but your behavior associated with those things. This creates an ideal of how one should implement selfies in their daily norms and resonates with self-discipline. Rosalind Gill would argue that the sexualization of the selfie has become progressively worse because us as consumers of the selfie subconsciously encourage it. Normative sexualization creates hegemonic gender identities. We are the agent of our selfies and control what and how we produce those selfies. We allow ourselves to be the subject as well subject to others. If your parents were to monitor your Facebook or Instagram accounts, are they appropriate enough for them to see? If not, then you are part of the ideal surrounding of the selfie. Rosalind Gill uses the term neoliberalism to explain that the self is a product of commodification and implements an ideal that people should care about others and what they are doing and what they look like. Narcissistic people, such as people who take selfies, will become the desired of future generations. For Gill, oppression is prevalent in the ways in which people, especially women, are expected to create and implement a solution to objectification. However, this is not liberation. It is important to remember that the characteristics of ideologies of gender identities do not begin with the goals of feminism. Rather, they reflect the dominant values, ideas, and beliefs that are commonly expressed within ideology.